Welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. Tonight I'm going to give you the Capra Comparison Picks for some more prelim fights. I'm not sure if the ones I did yesterday or these ones are early. I don't know the order. I think I have it messed up. But nonetheless, prelim fights for UFC Vegas 41. Be sure to check out the show I did last night where I did three other prelim fights. Um, and I noticed today that they added a fight. I didn't uh, cover that one yet. I might, I mean, I already broke down all the papers for every fight this week. So, but it's that Mason, um, was it Mason Jones? Let me see, I'm gonna pull it up right now. It's unexpected, I was like, where'd this fight come from? They just added it, they must have added it today. But, um, hold on. Gotta go through all these, here we go. So I did, yesterday I did, let me, let me check the order. Yeah, the order is messed up because now I'm gonna be doing, you know, what you see in front of you, the, like Lavinia Souza and Randa Marcos, that is not the curtain jerker, but I'm doing it today. Yesterday I uh, did uh, Tabitha Ricci, Oliveira, Kama Worthy versus Jack Herbert, Sarah Pauli versus Pickett. Be sure to check them out. The fight that was added was Mason Jones versus David Onama. I have not done any research yet. I do know David Onama is undefeated and he trains out of glory with James Krause, Glory MMA, and fitness in Jackson Summit. Is it Jackson Summit, Missouri, or something like that? But anyway, I didn't cover that one. I'm not sure if I can because I did all, all my, I did, I looked much a ton of cappers already and they didn't, they don't have picks for that. So regardless, be sure to check out the video I did last night. And now without further jibber jabber, let's get right into this. Oh man, you know what? The fight I like the best of all three of these is this one. Usually I start here and work my way around to the top. But this time I'm gonna do it backwards. I'm gonna start here at the top because this is actually the curtain jerker, like I said. Then I'm gonna go to that one and then finish the thing off with uh, Park vs. Rodriguez. So, the curtain jerker. We've got the female strawweight fight between Lavinia Souza, the Brazilian gangster, taking on Randa Marcos, Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm is, yeah, I guess, I guess you'd call it Quiet Storm. She hasn't been making a noise because she is one in four in her last five. She's on a four fight with losing streak, a skid, if you will. That's why there she is, the underdog here, plus 105, just a slight underdog with more losses than she has wins. That's unheard of. You don't see that in the UFC, do you? Talk about double digit losses. When do you see the losses outnumber the wins? Lavinia Souza, though, uh, she's the favorite. Slight, minus 125. She's coming off a loss herself to Amanda Lemos. She got beat ground and pound round one. She's three and two in her last five. Um, yeah, she is the uh, the favorite here out of Nova Duracao, Muay Thai in Brazil. They have a, both Souza and Marcos have a com common opponent in Ashley Yoder. Souza beat her by unanimous decision. Rana Marcos beat her by split decision, meaning not all the judges thought she won that. Um, most recently, Rana Marcos, like I said, she's on a four fight losing skid. Most recent loss was to uh, Luana Pinheiro by an illegal up kick, uh, kick. I remember seeing her do that. Unreal. But she does have, she fights at a TriStar gym that's in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, she's got a one inch height and half an inch reach. No, no really big reach advantage there. She is older by 30, by six years. She's 36. Lavinia Souza is 30. So let's see who we got taking the fighter out of TriStar in Canada. 
or the fighter in I don't know, Jericao, Jericao Muay Thai in Brazil. So, taking, we're going to start with the favorite, taking the Vinha, the Brazilian gangster, Souza. We've got MMA experts. That's AJ DeVito. He's saying Lavinia Souza should get the victory here by decision. By the way, all the links, of course, will be in the description. Be sure to check all these guys out. They're fantastic. The odds come from Bet Online. I used to go through Bovada, but now me and the, I live in New York State. No longer can you bet through Bovada. A lot of that, a lot of the stuff is shut down. Like a lot of those, I can't bet through Bet365. I can't bet through, uh, what's the other one? That's my bookie. I can't, I can only, like DraftKings, I can't, I can only make fantasy like DraftKings lineups. I can't bet like, like parlays or straight bets or prop bet. I can't bet like that with DraftKings, which is unfortunate. I'm one of the, New York is a yellow state when it comes to green, red, and yellow, like where you can bet. Yellow means you can only bet the, what do they call it, promotional or... You know, the lineups. You can only bet a, make a lineup, which thankfully I can at least still do that. Um, anyway, these line, these I've been with Bet Online for ages. If you guys are interested in getting a little bonus, little code, I can uh, just message me on Instagram or through here and I can send you a link where you and I will get an extra little bonus money for joining Bet Online. I don't know why I'm plugging it so bad, but. Um, uh, I also, um, I do have an account with Jazz Sports, but uh, I rarely use it. So, I mean, I I think I've maybe 140 bucks in that account. I, Like I said, I rarely use it. I, They call you. That's the, the Jazz Sports. They'll call you and be like, hey, man, I got a special deal. This is uh, Jose from Jazz Sports, and uh, I'll give you a uh, $100 or a match your free pay, play, 100% free play match, you know, with only a 15 times rollover. Oh, whatever. But anyway, I stick with Bet Online. That's that's my that's that's my book. That's the book I use. So these odds are from Bet Online, and they're they're rather recent. They're from about an hour ago. Um, anyway, back to this. Taking uh, Randa Marcos, we've got uh, Ray from MMA Pickums Podcast. Pickums is saying Marcos by decision. She does have a lot of. She's, you know, one time she beat uh, who's a Cavio Cavio. She she's had a lot of uh, UFC experience. And she's had, she has some very good wins within the UFC. So you can, but man, four fight losing skid, 10 and 11 and one record. I mean, ah, take it for what you will. Okay. Then we've got, uh, Souza is triple P certified, perfect parlay pursuit. Luke, Alex, and Dan all in agreement certifying this for perfect parlay pursuit. Um, we've got taking Marcos. We have Layton from UFC Gambling Addicts. Lay is on the side of Marco. And for the uh, tiebreaker, we've got my good friend Vlad the Bulgarian Cowboy. That's right, boy. That's right, folks. Vlad is taking Random Marcos. That's UFC. Celebrities and classics. I got this. I asked him he today. He had a live stream discussion while I was at work, and I was and I was finishing up making the these uh, capper picks. So I was like, "Hey, man, who you, I missed it? Who are you taking, Souza and Random Marcos?" I'm not very confident with this pick, uh, but you make me take a side. I take Random Marcos. All right, so um. Yeah, Random Marcos edges out the capper majority. Unless you want to split Perfect Parlay Pursuit into three cappers. If you put it that way, then Sousa would win. But I count it's just one link. 
So I count it as one vote here, one capper. So put it that way, Marcos does edge it out because they're, they influence each other. You know that. It's just like duos like Johnny and uh, Jose from Tiger Bomb, they influence each other. What, the Matt and Craig Allen, they influence each other. Yeah, sometimes they do have disagreements and stuff, but usually if, you know, they they're, they can talk each other into, just like me and Dave on Fridays, we influence each other. That's that's the whole thing about having more than one cap around a show. So I count it as one vote. Unless they, they're uh, separate, then I will, you know, that's a separate pick. So... Anyway, in this uh, fight here, I'm going to have to go with the, the fighter with the better record. I mean, and she has a better win against Ashley Yoder. She won unanimous decision. Randa Marcos edged out the victory by split decision. You know, Ashley Yoder, the spider monkey, she's all right. She's okay. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Lavinia Souza here. I'm not confident at all with this pick. It's more of a, like, a sit back and enjoy your pop and popcorn. That's what the Fight Night picks boys say, because pop is soda, another word for soda. Fireball and popcorn, that's what Clint says. Um, I just, you know, whatever. I'm just going to enjoy the fight. I'm not, I'm supposed to stay away from popcorn. No carbs after three, right, BC Dave? Except I haven't, I've cheated on that every single night since I, sober October. Sober October, I've yet to go a full week. I've yet to go th three days. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna take Lavinia Souza by a decision. This is a female fight, so, and like I said, I'm not confident. Maybe I will uh, strengthen or flip my pick after I watch the weigh in, see how they measure up on the scale and, and face offs. Next, we've got. The, oh, by the way, this Marcos, 10-11-1, I just want to say, must win. She's in a must win scenario. Sousa kind of in the same boat. Well, I mean, that, she still might be able to, because the women's, women's UFC is, you know, there's not many competitors in all these divisions. They can barely make enough fighters to make up a top 15. But uh, straw weight, I mean, but for real, Rana Marcos, she's got to win or she's going to whatever, Invicta, PFL, LFA, Bellator, one of those, somebody, someplace else, not the UFC, I'm sure of that. So, moving on. Next, we've got, this is an interesting fight. Jeff Molina taking on UFC debut newcomer, Miojo. Daniel Lacerda. Okay, so we got El Jefe taking on Miojo. All right, so, or, yeah. Uh, let's start talking about the favorite here in Jeff Molina. He is 9-2. He is coming off a win against uh, Kileng Aori. Unanimous decision. Jeff Molina's on a eight-fight win streak, folks. That's right. Um... He doesn't have a lot of fights in the UFC, but still, he's going against this guy who has zero fights in the UFC because he is a UFC debutante. He's coming off a uh, TKO win against Rodrigo Serafian. I think that was in Chuto, Brazil. That's that Brazilian regional scene. Chuto is a good, it's like combate. They're, the Brazilian regional scene is tough, man. It's, if, you're, if you do good down there, you have a good shot at doing decent in uh, UFC. I, I like that regional scene. You know what my favorite regional scene is, though? I would, uh, probably Cage Fury, that Philadelphia, Jersey, Northeastern scene. I like that a lot. I don't know. There's a, there's a bunch of them, though. I like the, you know, Cage Warriors, of course. But that's not. That's more of a full full on promotion. It's not like a regional. Well, I guess you could. But that's all Europe. Even though it's based out of ink. Well, anyway, regardless, um, Jeff Molina, eight fight win streak. These people have this, these guys have the same height. Lucerda's uh, reach is unknown, so I would just assume it's, if there is an advantage either way, it's probably like an inch or half inch or something stupid like that. 
Jeff Molina, El Jefe. Here's the kicker, one of the kickers. Fighting out of Glory MMA. Jess, a James Krause product. You know who else is fighting out of there? That's uh, Grant Dawson. He's on this card going against Ricky Glenn. He's out of there. Um, other fighters out of Glory MMA with fights coming up. We have Derek Minner is going to be fighting Ryan Hall December. And then next year in February, Jason Witt, the Vanilla Grill, is going to be fighting Philip Rowe. So Glory MMA, James Krause, man, very active. I like I like Glory MMA. I mean, he did a horrible job coaching the Tim Elliott because Tim Elliott, what that last fight of his, what was he? He was showboating. Just it was it was it was a bad look there, bad look. But I guess he he came to terms with it and fessed up. So yeah, I didn't coach him well. I yeah, it's all you can do is you know, you know. Be a man up on your for your mistakes, and that's what he did. He said he 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 blamed he blamed himself. But this kid, uh, Daniel Lacerda, he fights out of ATS team. That's in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, Alex Oliveira fights out of the ATS team. He's and this kid also see the eleven and one, all eleven wins by finish. He is a BJJ brown belt. That's why I say this is a very interesting fight. Molina here on an eight-fight win streak. Lacerda, 11-1. and one. Um, His one loss was because of an injury he obtained in the first round against some guy named Adilson Alves. I don't know. And um, let's see who's taking Molina, El Jefe, and who's taking Miojo in this fight. Starting with the favorite in Molina, we've got all the boys from Perfect Parlay Pursuit, our Triple P certifying this. Triple P certified! They uh, agreed, this card, I think they agreed, like they certified, Triple P certified, that's what all three of them agree. I think they Triple P certified maybe five Five fights on the five or six fights on this card. I know at the end they give like a rundown of what they agree on, and they said a ten dollar bet would make them seventy bucks if they did a parlay with the agreement. So that means it was plus seven hundred with their you know. Anyway, links in the description. Check them out. Um, uh, also taking Jeff Molina, we've got uh, Vlad. The Bulgarian Cowboy, UFC Celebrities and Classics. He just thinks Molina is an all-around better fighter than this other guy, Lucer Lucerda. Daniel Lucerda. Uh, a real bike, Mom. Not a, what's, <laughs> what's Daniel LaRusso? Lu Daniel LaRusso, the original Karate Kid. That's why I keep thinking about Daniel Lucerda, Daniel LaRusso. Anyway, um... <laughs> He should change his nickname from Miojo to Karate Kid. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with that. Um, Leighton also taking Molina, the minus 175 favorite here. Leighton, UFC Gambling Addicts. I am a patron of his. I, I joined his Patreon. I, I enjoy the Patreon. I, and plus, I'm a friend of his. On I follow him on Instagram, and he actually messages me back. I send funny memes to him every occasionally. Haven't done one in a while, though. Um, Ray from MMA Pickums also taking Jeff Molina. And finally, making this a contrarian pick, AJ DeVito from MMA Experts. Is taking Lacerda, the underdog, plus 150 by KO in round three over the eight strike win streak, Molina. But like I said, it could go that way. Lacerda, 11 and 1, coming off Shudo, Brazil. That's not bad. He's a BJ Jump. BJJ Brown Belt, and all his wins are by finish. That's what gets me. He's got more wins than Molina as a professional, less losses as a professional, and the key, all his wins are by finish. 
I think I'm gonna have to go with the underdog here. Dog or pass, right, bro? D or P, dog or pass, plus money. I'm a plus money junkie, so I'm taking Lacerda over Jeff Molina. I was taking Jeff Molina for a while. I might change my pick at the weigh-ins, but right as of right now and on Typology, I'm gonna pick Lucerta. Maybe after watching the weigh-ins, if I see somebody look sucked out or something, I may falter, may change my pick, may flip it. But right now I'm gonna take him, and I think it's gonna happen within distance. He is a knockout specialist or finish specialist. He's got submission finishes too. That's why at already plus 150. So just say within distance. On Tapology, I'll probably say like TKO, KO, TKO, disqualification by round round two. But uh, just within distance would be my live bet when I when they're walking down the, you know, and their their entrance into the cage is when the, I make my last minute prop bets, and that's probably what I'll do is Lucerta within distance. Finally. The best, my personal favorite fight of all three of these, and the closest fight in odds, we've got the Iron Turtle, Jun Young Park, the fellow, the Korean, taking on Gregory Robocop, Rodriguez, the Brazilian. Okay, Jun Young Park is, was at one time the favorite, but now you can see money's can't come in on Rodriguez. It is down to a pick -em. It's a coin flip. Minus 110 both ways. Park, he's 13-4, uh, coming off a majority decision win over Tafan Inchukwi. He is 4-1 in his last five. I will add his last fight against Tafan Inchukwi. They were um, given uh, praise. After, after the fight, you know, they have a little uh, post-fight just interview when he's out there all sweaty and stuff still. And he has a translator, of course, and uh, basically it went like this. It was I'm going to do it in English, but uh, he said, he's like, um, yeah, you used your, uh, I noticed, I think it was, uh, who was it? Joe Rogan, Paul Felder, DC, wh whoever was asking him questions. I forget, but I remember this fight This because I, I was so happy because I chose him and I won money off him. So I was listening to it, you know, just waiting for the next fight to come up and either like a yeah, we, I think it was Joe Rogan, maybe. But he was like, uh, oh, we, we know she used your uh, your wrestling a lot in this fight, and you used that to control it, and you got the majority decision. Did you, you know, did you, were you worried about, like, uh, when it comes to decision and stuff? They ask the same shit to every guy, every fighter that wins by decision. And uh, he was like, uh, pretty much, yeah, I, you know, a little bit worried or whatever. Uh, and if you like my wrestling, <laughs> Wait till you get a load of my striking. He goes, I'm not even a wrestler. That's my, I'm, my background's striking. I'm a puncher, I'm a boxer, I'm a striker. I was like, damn. Cause you know, everybody's like Iron Turtle. His wrestling's good. He, that's why he won, they beat that Tefan and Chukwi because of his wrestling. Um, but anyway, he did, he got, I said wrestling, I didn't say jujitsu. Cause he does his last loss was in the contender series against Anthony Her Fluffy Hernandez, who he had kind of choked him in the second round. But Anthony Hernandez, you know, submitted the black belt hunter, Rodolfo Vieira. So there's no shame in getting submitted by Anthony Hernandez. He's proven, Fluffy has proven that he is a decent submission artist when it comes to doing that. So when you tap out the, the black belt hunter, Rodolfo Vieira, I mean, come on. What else do you gotta prove? Jun Young Park does fight out of Korean top team in Seoul, South Korea. You know who else fights out of there? Da Eun Jung, probably one of my favorite fighters in the UFC right now. And he is gearing up. He's got a fight coming up against uh, Kennedy Ezenchukwu. Ezenchukwu. Kennedy Ezenchukwu. I think he, that guy comes out of... Uh, What's that one down in down in Dallas, Texas? Fortis. Fortis MMA, I do believe, he fights out of. Anyway, Union Park is the uh, one year older, despite how uh, Gregory Rodriguez looks. He's actually younger than Park. 
Uh, yellow stays mellow. That's why I tell people that because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm old myself, but I don't look as old as I really am. Rodriguez, like, looks like uh, Barack Obama, but he also looks a lot older than 29. He looks like you can throw another 20 years on that 49, and nobody would bat an eye. They'd believe you. But um, you know, RoboCop is prime though. He's got a record of 10 and three. Like I said, this is going to be a banger. I don't know who's going to win this. RoboCop comes off a win against Dusko Todorovic, who I had picked Dusko Todorovic in that. Rodriguez outclassed him and won a unanimous decision, which he rightfully earned. It wasn't a robbery like that. Damn, I don't even want to talk about the two robberies that happened last week, okay? It'll just piss me off. So, Gregory Rodriguez is also coming. He's 4-1 and one also in his last fight. That's what I mean, bro. This is going to be a good fight. Um, his last loss was to Jordan Williams. He got That was in the Contender Series. He got beat by punches in round one. But since then, he's been on a little bit of a tear. Here's here's one of here's a hot take kicker hot point. Write this down. Rodriguez has a five inch height, three inch reach advantage. That does give a green check for Rodriguez when it comes to size advantage. But Iron Turtle didn't get his name for being glass jaw. This guy is durable. So I mean. I, I don't has he been finished? I he yeah, he got choked out, but he has he hasn't been finished by punches. Um so he hasn't been knocked out. Uh Gregory Rodriguez fights out of the X Gym that's in Brazil. Other notable names fighting out of the X Gym are Warley Alves and Alan Patrick. So take that for what you will. Man, this is gonna be a good fight. Uh let's see what the Cappers have to say as I change my weak ass marker that's fading already. So we're gonna start with uh, you know since Jun Young Park was the favorite at one point, we'll go with him. And um, we got taking Jun Young Park, the Korean. We've got UFC celebrities and classics, Vlad. I think he, he said something like, I'm going to take him for ranch. Because he, he, he just assumes that I lean toward all Korean, I'm biased to all Korean fighters. Which, to be honest with you guys, I kind of am. But not all of them. I've, fa I've faded, I faded that Superboy before. That He's a Korean fighter. I faded, I bet, against him before. Um, Jun Young Park, I've yet to fade him. And, uh... Dalun Jung is one of my favorites, but I have faded Korean fighters in the past. Seung Woo Choi, you're not going to see me fade him, not, uh, you know, spoiler, I'm going to probably pick him this card too. But anyway, uh, Jun Young Park, uh, UFC Slavers Classics, Bulgarian Cowboys taking Jun Young Park. Um, then we've got uh, Layton UFC Gambling Addicts taking Robocop, which is a... Man, good bets, good picks. This is a great fight. Good matchmaking, Sean Shelby or Dana, whoever put this together. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, then we got AJ DeVito, MMA, or no, AJ DeVito, MMA experts, is taking Junior Park. He thinks he's going to slide through a very close split decision. So AJ DeVito from MMA experts is taking Park by decision. Then we've got um, MMA Pickham's podcast. That's uh, Ray. Ray is on the side of RoboCop. He didn't say method, but he is taking RoboCop here. Um, then we've got uh, oh, the tiebreaker. Perfect Parlay Pursuit, and they aren't Triple P certified, so it's actually uh, going to be tied. Because, but uh, we'll give you know one. There's they're triple P, so there's three of them. So that means two took one person, one took the other. Uh, Park, Jun Young Park is the pick here because uh, Alex and his brother Luke 
both taking the iron turtle here to get it done. However, uh, Dan the Batman is taking RoboCop Gregory Rodriguez despite him looking super old. That's pretty much why Alex is taking Jun Young Park is because even though he's a year older, he looks 10 years younger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you have it. That's all the cappers I've got for this show. And it's, I guess you could say it's a tie, but realistically, Park does have one more capper taking him. And you guys already know which way I'm going. I, but it's not just because the dude's Korean. It's because that his last, it's recency bias, if anything, because that his comment after his post-fight interview with uh, when he when he beat uh, Tefan and Chukwi, and I was so glorious, so happy that uh, he won. I listened to it, and plus I'm, you know, my wife's taking Korean, um, like does, she takes online like Zoom meeting classes every Thursday. Korean, she cooks Korean food. I am half Korean. Squid Game, and, new, and you know. It's the, the what's that? Uh, B, BTS. I, Korea is making it, starting to make a, a move, like in the media. Korean things are starting to pick up, and I'm, you know, I like it. I like the hype on the Koreans. Um, I'm gonna take Park to get it done, and I think he's gonna get it done by. I know it's boring, but I'm gonna have to say decision here. It will be kind of close. Rodriguez does have that that height advantage and it's that slight three inch reach advantage. So he could play a smart game, but I think Park does have the rest. He's well-rounded. He's got the wrestling and uh, what he said was, if you like my wrestling, wait till you get a load of my striking. That's pretty much roughly translated. He's like, he's like, yeah, I use my wrestling and stuff, but I'm, I'm a striker at heart. So, I think he's more well-rounded. I think he should get the decision. I'm glad the line is not a uh, negative, what was he, minus 125 or something. I'm glad it's evening him out. And maybe if enough money comes on RoboCop, which it totally could, uh, they like to fade Korean fighters, even though Korean, you know, the culture stuff is starting to pick up, the fighters still get faded. And Rodriguez, the Brazilian, does have a good shot here. Close fight, close fight. I might, all these are pretty close and they're liable for change after watching the weigh-ins, but I'm gonna take part to get it done by decision. So to recap, time check. What time is it? And going, it's pretty about good. To recap, I got Lavinia Souza. Getting the random Marcos out of the UFC. Sousa's only lost three. Marcos has lost more than she's won. So I think Sousa's going to get the decision there. Marcos is also 36 six years older. Then I've got uh, the newcomer, the debut, Daniel Lacerda. Even Daniel Lacerda is a little bit, a uh, one year older. Not much. 25. Jeff Molina, 24. I'm not confident at all with this. Jeff Molina is on that five, eight fight win streak, but Lucerta, 11 and one, better record as a pro. I think Lucerta is gonna shock everybody. I'm taking the dog here, taking the plus money, getting him, got him winning within distance. He's finished everybody he's beat. That's so I'm going with that hype. And finally, I'm taking the Korean and Jung Yoon Park. Um, to get it done over Gregory Robocop Rodriguez, but we should, should see how they look when they face off because Rodriguez does have five inch height advantage that might come in handy. And I think he might ha know how to use that height advantage for striking against Junior Park, but uh, hopefully thinking Junior Park will take it to the ground, smother, control time, get the decision that way. So anyway, I appreciate you all watching. Thank you. Give me that thumbs up. Go ahead and leave comments on who you think is going to win these three or the fights yesterday. Go ahead, comment anything you want. Go ahead and comment. Uh, I, I read them all. I appreciate them. 
Um, be sure to, if you haven't subscribed, do that. I noticed I got a couple new subscribers last night, and I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, good luck on these bets. And tomorrow is Wednesday. Soccer season has ended for my little boy. So I don't. I can make another video tomorrow, and I'll start getting into the main card. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good luck on these bets. Peace out.